Let's talk about uh, Silovac. So what's the, the, the Silovac system? Basically, it's a storage system for bulk grain, forage byproducts. It's flexible. We have a polyethylene liner um, that uh, provides a flexible structure. It's not rigid like, like um, a metal beam hmm? or concrete beam. Is hermetic, which uh, makes some, uh, provides the silo bag with some specific features for conservation, as we will talk later on. Uh, Bain hermetic or R type means that we have a restriction to the exchange of gases between the inside and the, out the outside of the bag. And it's temporary in the sense that you can use it only once. You can store grain in silo bag for several months, but once you remove it from the silo bag, you cannot use the silo bag again. The plastic could be recycled. It's a very good quality plastic, but you cannot use it as a silo bag again. Uh, can, can we ask a question on each side? Of course. It's a multi-layer, we will see it in a while. And above everything, silo bag is a logistic solution, as you will see or you will understand in these two days that we will see different experience of use of silo bag. It's a very powerful tool and it's a logistic solution. We talk about hermetic storage. Silo bag is a type of hermetic storage as many others, many others that we can see. The cocoons, this is an Australian product. Um, up there and down here, uh, you have the small bags, pigs and, and um, grain pro, etc., up to 100 kg. Um, the cocoons are made of um, uh, a thicker liner. You can reuse it many times, but still you cannot handle grain as bulk. You have to put it in, in sacks, right? In small bags inside. Or you have the others that we, we see in the uh, lower right corner. Uh, we call it here Australian bankers. Those are also a kind of hermetic storage. But silo bag is a flexible hermetic storage system. The main advantages of the silo bag are low investment capital in comparison with the traditional grain storage facility, easy to use, it's very simple to transfer the knowledge about how to make a bag, handle a bag, uh, control quality in the, the, of, of the grain in the bag. It's very simple. Simple concept, simple operation. You can set up a traceability system very easily in silo bag. Quality segregation. Why? Because if you have 17 tons of a specific grain, you can make a silo bag for 17 tons. If you have 120 tons, you can make a silo bag for 120 tons. You don't need to spoil or, or, or waste uh, um, empty space in a bin. Mm? So it's very, very good for that. We talk about logistics. It, you can adapt the silo bag for different conditions. Flexibility, you will see in some of the, the, the examples um, that if you have a, a good harvest, you only need to add more silo bags. Next year, if you have a 
shorter harvest, you just make fewer silobacs. So it's very flexible. And you have some advantages in terms of conservation, basically or mainly regarding to insects and uh, quality problems due to insects. What can be stored in a silo bag? Well, almost any kind of grain. Corn, wheat, barley, rice, sunflower, sorghum, canola. As grain or seeds for the next planting season. Many farmers here, they store the seed for the next planting season in silo bags and also some seed companies. Byproducts like WDGs, pellets, specialty grains like lentils, beans, popcorn, silage, even fertilizers, sand in some cases. So many kinds of products that come as bulk. Even cotton? Cotton seed. Here we have some information about the bag itself. The material of the bag is a low density polyethylene with some additives for color, antioxidants, UV protection, sliding properties. In general, the standard silo bag has about 230 micrometers thickness, three to five layers depending on the company. Um, usually it's white in the outside and black in the inside, but you can see other colors of bags, like pink or green. They mean something special, like the green bag is from a company that means that that bag was made with rec recycled plastic from previous silo bags, in, at least in, in part, and the pink one means that when you buy that bag, you are cooperating with a cancer research program. So the farmers pay a little bit more for the bag <laughs> and the manufacturer of the bag match that amount and it's a kind of um, um, support for research. Um, the length is variable. The typical one is 60 or 75 meters but you can make it as short as you need and there are some bags that come as up to 120 50 meters long. Diameters, you have many, many alternatives. The typical one for grain storage are nine or 10 feet diameter. This is 2.7 meters diameter, more or less. At a standard silo bag, nine feet diameter and 60 meters long can hold about 200 tons of wheat. Right. So that uh, black layer, uh, I guess, comprises of food grade color or yeah, yeah. Everything is food grade. Yeah. And the three to five layers. Do you have any further details about the three to five? The, what kind of layers are those? Basically, the material is the same. It's low density polyethylene. Um, we don't have in the market silo bags with oxygen barrier like you, you might find it in, in, in other products. There are no silo bags with uh, uh, EVOH or some of those components that you can have with high barrier. Uh, so basically it's the same product, the same material with some specific characteristics but you don't have barrier if you ask for that. But basically it's the same low density polyethylene that conforms the bag. In the grain, you have in the grain book you have the seed, 
but also you have uh, microorganisms, microbial, that comes with the grain from the field. And you might also have insects coming with the grain. All those are living organisms, and they will respire. They will consume oxygen and consume the dry matter of the grain. Mostly carbo carbohydrates. Why? Because all the living organisms need to generate energy for the living processes, for the metabolic um, activities, so they will respire. And the respiration will produce carbon dioxide, heat, and moisture. So basically, the respiration of the grain bulk will depend on the amount of moisture that you have, the temperature of the grain mass, the presence of oxygen, the microbial load, and the presence of insects. So this is a general equation of respiration. In any kind of hermetic storage, we have a layer of plastic that will prevent the exchange of gases between the inside and the outside. So the respiration of molds, insects, and grain, little by little, will affect the internal composition of the atmosphere. Oxygen will decrease, carbon dioxide will increase. And that is what we call self-modified environment on self-modified atmosphere. In a schematic way, we can understand this as a chart in which, on time, we have a decrease in oxygen concentration and an increase in carbon dioxide. In a metal beam, this will not happen because all the oxygen that is consumed is being replaced by external oxygen. And all the carbon dioxide that is released is also released to the ambient air. So you don't have a modified atmosphere. In a hermetic storage system, you, by doing so, you have some benefits in the conservation because it will arrest the mold development and the insect population. In some other products, like sunflowers that have a lot of oil, you can also improve the shelf life because you will reduce the oxidation of the fat. This is a graphical representation of what happens in non-hermetic and hermetic storage. Corn store at 17% moisture content. It will support microbial activity. After 180 days of storage, non-hermetic condition, you will see the embryo of the corn affected, the color of the corn, and you will see what happened in hermetic storage. So there is a protection of the modified atmosphere on the quality of the grain during storage. We have done, in INTA, research about this for different products. Wheat, sunflower, corn, barley, soybeans, sorghum, rice, beans, rapeseeds. And the overall remarks of this research is that for dry products, you don't need, you don't have mold activity because the, the grain is already dry. So there are no quality changes in silo bag storage up to one year. We have done this in Argentina, and we have collaborated in Brazil, Australia, and USA. So it's not only because of this condition here is part of the um, uh, characteristic of the hermetic storage. So hermetic storage works, and works very well. 
Let's talk about the system itself. The system has several components. The loading machine, there are different types. You will see some of them tomorrow. Um, this is the most typical type of loading machine in Argentina. You have a receiving pit, a shaft, a small um, screw conveyor, and the bagging chamber. You need a tractor for the power of this machine. It's very simple, um, as you will see tomorrow. There are other types, like the one in the lower and right corner, that do not require a tractor. Do, that machine does not require power by itself. It works with the gravity of the, of the grain. And then you have other variations that will help you to load the grain from the ground level, more or less. Mm -hmm. So that's the basic concept. And then you have variations. And the companies, they, th those guys were working during the last few years trying to create a solution for each kind of needs that the, the, the sector might have. Okay. So the objective of this equipment is to load the grain into the silo bag. It's very simple. As I mentioned before, the working capacity is very high. It's very high. Basically, it's limited by the transfer capacity that you will, the feeding capacity of the machine, not by the, 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 the bagging machine itself. Up to, if you don't have any restriction, up to 300 tons per hour. Then you have other equipment for collect the grain from the bag and transfer to a grain car or a truck. Um, they have, we have a couple of models here. I don't want to explain the models in the screen because you will see it and you will understand it better when you will see it. But also it's a simple system and very high working capacity. Um, also the system, the, the, uh, there are some uh, <coughs> equipments that um, you can use the unloading machine for helping the bagging operation. But you will see it tomorrow we can explain it better, maybe, uh, Leo. No, no tenemos esa máquina, pero we don't have that, that equipment here, but we can explain it tomorrow better hmm? in, in, the, in the field. Here you will see some operations unloading the bag. But it's very simple. So unloading of a 200 ton uh, bag has to be done uh, in continuously in one day, or you can stop? You can stop. And then either, either the loading and the unloading operation, you can do it. Um, with intervals? Yeah, you can do it uh, in, not in, in one, one at once but you can do it in parts. Uh, of course, um, for, for doing the, the loading operation in parts, it means that you can, you, sometimes you have to leave the machine with the bag in the field, which has some restriction about the weather and stuff, uh, but uh, you can do it in a couple of days, three, four days, no problem. Even also for unloading, you can do it in, in several days as well. 
Other piece of equipment, very important, is the transportation system. We use here um, grain carts, or what you can see in other places, like fertilizer wagons, but many of them were specifically designed for that. Um, tomorrow you will see some of them. Uh, the, the basically, what we have developed here for our system, in which we have big combines in the field working at very high capacity, we don't want to delay the harvest operation, so these wagons have a very high unloading capacity. So the organ that you see there has a very high capacity. But also you can adapt the loading operation with other um, alternatives. Mm -hmm. For us, it's not a, a suitable operation, that one, but for smaller amount of grain, it could be. It's important, you will see tomorrow, a good soil preparation. It's very important to understand that when you set up a bag, it might be in the field for several months, so you want to make a very nice soil preparation. This is a very good one. Clean surface, level, no stones, nothing that could damage the bag. Free of trees around, the branches can detach and break the bag. So there are some few things that you have to pay attention. We recommend to do soil preparation. There are some equipments that you will see it tomorrow as well. To do a simple soil preparation for this. And then you just set up the bags in the field. For one bag, nine meters, nine feet diameters and 60 feet, 65 meters long, you will require about 325 square meters of land. Our recommendation is to place the bags two an empty road to an empty road, we will explain it tomorrow, because in that situation, you can remove or you can unload any bag that you need. Otherwise, if you put it one right next to the other and you, have, and you need to unload the one that is in the middle, you have to start from, the, from one of the ends. Eh? And this is our recommendation. You will see it tomorrow that the, many people don't follow that. <laughs> of course, um, in some places they don't have uh, that much land to um, spare for, for, for roads in, in the middle, so they put one bag next to the other. So how is the bagging process? Basically, you close the bag at the beginning, with different, you can make a knot, or you can do heat sealing, or there are some other alternatives. And you start to dump the grain in the receiving pit, and the bag starts to fill. After a few tons, the weight of the grain pushes the, the machine forward, leaving the bag behind. So as you are filling the machine with grain, the, the weight of the grain is pushing the machine fro forward. And then the machine has some brakes, you put pressure in the brakes, and that's how you regulate the amount of grain that you can fed inside the bag. 
you see there the guy measuring with the tape the stretching of the bag. There is a recommendation. If you overstretch the bag, what happens is the liner gets thinner and more fragile. So there is a limit for that and you can check it. There are some printed rules or marks in the bag and you can check it. After you finish filling the bag, you just close it with heat sealing system or some other system that we can talk tomorrow. <coughs> and that's it. Basically, it's very simple. The bag to do a good work has to be airtight. And there are some um, wild and domestic animals that like to make damage in the bag. Eh? Dogs like to run on top of it. Uh, we have some kind of armadillos. They like to make a cave under the bag. Um, rodents sometimes. So to have a short grass around the bag and the use of electrical fences, simple electrical fences, will do most of the, the work for keeping outside the, the animals. And also, we can spread repellents made of um, natural compounds, like capsicin, you know, the, the irritant um, compound of, uh, of the hot chilies. Um, and they will do a very good job to avoid the, the rodents to do some damage in the bag at the end of the bag. The problem is in the, in the end of the bag when you have this, the, the, the edge, the bendings of the liner. In the middle of the bag, when the liner is um, tense, uh, you don't see much problem, okay? So we do have repellents and we will show you tomorrow how to use them. One important issue is quality preservation. So how we do the monitoring of the grain during storage. Remember that we have grain in silo bag up to more than one year, so sometimes. So quality monitoring is very important. Just it's that simple as that. As you see in the picture, basically you insert, we call that a track, track probe. We use for collecting samples from tracks. Take the sample, make the analysis that you want to do, and patch it. We have some specific patches for that. We, we, ca we can show it tomorrow. It's very, very easy, very simple to do the patching of the bag. Restoration of um, hermeticity is very important. But also we have some more sophisticated monitoring systems. We do not recommend to do this probing, probing too often because um, those Tapes can detach after a few weeks or a few months. And the more you have, the more risk you have of, some, of having some problem in some of them. So we have developed some systems based on carbon dioxide measurements. We made a correlation between the quality of the grain <coughs> and the expected CO2 concentration. Remember, CO2 concentration is because you have biological activity. The more <coughs> CO2 concentration you have, more biological activity, molds or insects, right? So we have developed those correlations and we have that kind of equipment. It's a, port it's a portable equipment. You just make 
like a, a small puncture in the bag with a needle, collect a little sample, and uh, analyze the gas concentration. That information is uploaded into the, uh, into the server, and you can, you can get into the web page with your user and password, and you see all your bags, the GPS location of the bag, um, quality information of the grain, and the condition of the bag. Is everything okay or there is a problem? So you, if you have to sell the grain and you have 10 bags, you can sell first the bag that has more problems, right? So it's a, also a logistic tool. Very simple. In one hour, you can do the monitoring of several, several bags. There are other alternatives for this. Instead of, instead of having a portable meter, you insert a probe that will collect data. Exactly. The problem is that with a portable meter, you can take a sample every five, six meters, and then move to the other bag and do the same, and to the other bag and do the same. With this one, the probe is kind of expensive, so you have to choose between the balance of how many probes you leave in the bag, and you leave in the bag and that's it. You cannot take that probe and take it to other bags. So it's a compromise between um, facility of uh, simplicity and uh, cost, basically. But this probe center, once this bag is empty, then that probe center can be used another season. Of course. but you can use it on only one bag at the time. Yeah. Hmm? It will be part of that bag, basically. Exactly. Insects in silo bags, we have very, very few reports in our cases in Argentina. Why is that? Because most of the, at, at least at the farmer level, they will harvest the grain, transfer the grain from the combine to the grain cart, from the grain cart to the silo bag. And the bag is new. You don't have a permanent infestation of insects in the bag. The bag is new, it's empty. So very few times we have problems of insects in the field. So many times we don't bring the, 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 the insects with the grain into the bag. There are some situations in which that could happen, which is some operation, as you will see tomorrow. We have an elevator, grain elevator, grain storage facility. They have to empty a bin to receive the new harvest. And that bin that they are um, unloading has insects in the grain. So they will transfer the grain with insects to the silo bag and then you might have problems. If the problem is important, you will have the effect of the modified atmosphere that will suppress the problem. It will not stop it, it will not prevent it, but it will slow it down. But one main, the main advantage of the silo bag is that you can conduct a fumigation very, very easily. Fumigation is to apply a gas to control insects, not liquid, not solid gas. We use aluminum phosphide. We apply it as a solid. Those are pellets, but they gasify or they liberate phosphine after a reaction with the moisture of the air, right? So since the silo bag is hermetic, you can do a very nice fumigation very easily, and we will show it tomorrow. You just insert a pipe 
in the bag every five meters and you apply the dosage, remove the pipe and put the patch. Every five meter, both sides? One side. It will diffuse. We have a lot of data about that, no problem. And if you are familiar with fumigation, you will, you will see tomorrow in a standard bin, metal bin, you, you have to use at least three grams of phosphine per ton. And with that, you will get 200, 300 parts ppm of phosphine concentration, 500 at the most. You will see it with the same concentration tomorrow uh, in, the, in the bag that we prepare over there, how much, how, how high is the concentration of phosphine that you get. Of course, it's hermetic, that's the main advantage. A metal beam is not hermetic, it will lose phosphine everywhere. Another advantage of the um, silo bag in terms of insects. Um, we harvest here core, uh, wheat in summer. The wheat can get into the bag up to 40, 42 degrees C, degrees Celsius, right? That's quite hot. And by March, that temperature drops below 20 degrees C. Why? There is no aeration, nothing. Because the heat transfer. Silobac has a huge exchange surface with the surrounding air and the soil. So it will tend the temperature will try to equilibrate with the average temperature throughout the seasons. So if you have a winter that could be a little bit hard, temperature will go down in the silo bag. For instance, here in winter time, the temperature of the grain inside of the silo bag is seven, eight degrees C. That will get rid of any kind of insects. So if you have a winter that is a little bit hard for insects, that will help a lot without any kind of um, chemical insecticide. But if you have to use it, phosphine is very easy, very simple. We will have a demonstration tomorrow of how to perform fumigation, and we have, do, we have done a fumigation last week, so you can see now, to the, tomorrow, what will be the concentration. So um, we have the beginning and at the end, basically. Hmm? So, wrapping up, the Argentine silo bag technology complex has more than 20 years of experience right now. And you will see that we have several components here. Bagging machines, several companies, grain cars, several companies, unloading machine also. Some, some of those guys, they produce both. Some of them produce only grain cars. Some of them produce only bagging machines. And that's, but in general, we have a lot of companies doing this kind of equipments with some particularities, each one of them. We have five, six um, silo bag manufacturers. We have related technologies, heat sealers, CO2 monitoring, patches, tapes, soil preparation equipment, electrical fences, repellents. And we have a strong program for research and extension related to silo bag, mainly driven, driven by INTA and universities. To give you an idea, all these are um, scientific publications from, from our group of INTA related to Silobag. And what I mean is we have a very nice consortium between the public and the private sector in this technology. In this technology and some others like no utilized system, 
but in this case, we are talking about Silovac, okay? And because of that, this was the evolution of the Silovac technology in Argentina. The bars indicates the production, total production of grains in Argentina in millions of tons from 1996 to 2020. And in red, you see the amount of grain that are being stored in silo bags. And you will see that we have an impressive adoption of the technology in our system. In the last two, three years, we are between 55, 50, 55 million tons of grain stored in silo bags. This is about 40% of our production, any kind of grain. So for us, it will be impossible to have then this increase in productivity without the silo bag technology. Here you have the production of grains in Argentina, different grains, commodities, corn, soybean, wheat, barley, sorghum, and sunflower. And you will see that there are quite a lot of overlapping in the production areas. So farmers, our farmers and the elevators have to handle different grains in different conditions. And silo bag, again, was a logistic solution for them. Here we use the silo bag at the farm level. Many farmers have done their first experience storing grain in silo bags. Our farmers were used to only produce the grain. And after production, they used to send the grain to the elevator. After the silo bag, they have the power because they store the grain. And it was very, a very useful tool for them. For the elevators, silo bags provide additional or supplementary storage capacity. So they have now a receiving capacity that they can adapt according to the size of the harvest of the year. Also, they have an easy and an inexpensive segregation tool. They can do identity preservation. And they have an airtight condition almost for free. If you do it right, in the right way, the silo bag, you have a very hard bag storage system. A few years ago, we have um, done the first international silo bag conference here and in Mar del Plata. More than 400 people from different countries. Um, and I think this was like um, the, one of the uh, tools or one of the uh, events that helped to promote the silo bag to the world. It was not because of this conference, but because many other things as well. Now, more than 50 countries in the world are using silo bags in different ways and under very different conditions. Under snow, in the desert, in very dry and heat conditions. So silo bag, um, the silo bag system is a logistic tool that could be adapted for uh, different production systems. Again, who is using the silo bag? in other countries, grain elevators, farmers, the industry, and even ports in some places. So we are here to um, 
help you to understand how the silo bag system works and to provide some inside information about how it could be adapted to your system. Last but not least, we will talk about cost estimation, which is one of the strongest points of the silo bag, in addition to the flexibility and um, logistic tool and all that things that we already talked. In the cost estimation, we have to consider the, the cost of the bag, labor, fuel, depreciation of the equipment, and repairments and maintenance. Any cost estimation requires some assumptions, right? This is something that we have done for other examples that uh, were asked for, for, um, for, uh, from our embassy in Pakistan for other conditions. It were not your, your requirement, requirements, but um, basically this cost estimation considers storage facility and seven storage facility with 370 tons each, 50 kilometers distance among them, and total grain storage, 2,600 tons of wheat per year, more or less 13 silo bags. Um, and the, the, the condition was that the grain from small bags was downloaded and uh, in a receiving pit and from then transferred to the silo bag. The cost of the machines in Pakistan already were the loading machine about $18,500, tractor, the cost of the tractor, 120 HP, unloading machine, um, variable cost, the cost of the bag, $460 in Pakistan, workforce, the labor, um, and fuel cost. Considering all that cost, the cost per ton is from seven to seven point five dollars. Hmm? So you will see that, and you will understand that no nobody will store fifty million tons of grain in silo bag if the if the technology doesn't work. The technology works; it's very good. Uh, you you and it's very competitive for our countries, in which I suppose that in Pakistan you might have the same problem. Investment is not very easy to do in Argentina, long-term investment. For, for our farmers, for our elevators, is not an easy task these days. So Silobag is also very powerful in that, in, in that sense, as, um, because the investment is little, the opera operational cost could be a little bit higher, but the investment is very little. So it's a very good solution for countries like ours. So this is more or less what we, uh, with Leandro, uh, we have prepared as a general presentation. And we want to leave the, now the, the talk for your questions, if you have any declarations. Of course. So, um, what about the uh, possibility of uh, uh, or risk of a combustion blast due to heat pockets developed inside? inside? Okay. Um, w we don't have any record news in the in all the years that uh, a silo bag has that kind of problem. And there is an explanation for that. If you have a very intense biological activity, it will consume the oxygen and it will slow it down naturally. So you, 
Can you have damage in the grain? Yes. If you store wet grain for a very long period of time, you might have damage. But you will not have um, the same kind of problem as you might have in a, in a regular metal bin. No way. Gracias. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. ¿eh? Nos vemos. That's the, the advantage of this to hermetic storage system. Okay. Hmm? And uh, is this technology uh, a patent technology of Argentina, or is it uh, invented somewhere else and Argentina acquired it? All right. The bag itself was invented for doing a silage, um, you know, storage of uh, um, maize plants or, 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 or pasture uh, doing the, for doing the fermentation process. That's, I think that was the first um, use of the technology. And for that was imported to Argentina in the, in the early 90s, late in the 80s and 90s. And uh, here um, we have some local companies that um, were manufacturing the, the, the loading system for, for, those, uh, for that use. And farmers always, they are looking for alternatives. They started to think, okay, why we don't use these for storing grain? Because we don't have storage capacity. And uh, then um, the, the private sector started to develop specific technology for that. The, the loading equipment, which is different to the one that you will use for uh, storing, for making silage. If there are some specific features that has but also the unloading system. That, that, that one is a specific design, and different, the different companies, they have different alternatives for that. Um, and also the grain carts also were developed with specific features to fit the concept of high capacity operation, simplicity, etc. So to answer in your question, um, the bag was imported for some other uses, and here we have created all the auxiliary technology that make it possible the use of the silo bag system, as you will see it here. But now it's not imported, now it's manufactured here. Everything. Yeah. Bags, loader and loader, grain carts, monitoring system, everything. Pakistan environment is very close to Indian, India's environment, and I uh, have seen that in your map that uh, in, you have already exported silo bags to India, mm -hmm. and India is using. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, can uh, Can you share something uh, in detail? Which part of India? Because India is a large. Country. It's a large country, and right? Right. Has different climatic, uh, uh, you know, uh, situations, conditions, situations, right? Different. Uh, mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, uh, which part of the country is more uh, inclined to? I don't have the details here, but we can get it okay. for you. Uh, but I understand that there are several places, several provinces of India that are already using the the silo bag. It's not one, okay. only one one province. There are several of them. Okay. Hmm? One point that I want to make is. Um, in South America, all the countries are using silo bag. In our conditions here, Brazil, very tropical condition. Colombia, very tropical condition. So, um, what about Mexico? Mexico as well, as well. In Sinaloa, the the the, the corn production section of Mexico, Mexico, U.S. In US, in Canada, of course, colder weather, right? Mm. Uh, in Pakistan, you know, the three months uh, 
fourth harvest uh, months are uh, May, June, July. Okay. These are very hot months. Mm -hmm. So temperature uh, is something like 40 degree to 50 degree be in between, 40 degree to 50 degree. Right. Throughout. Right. Uh, right. Especially in the daytime. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. What will happen is um, the grain is a bad heat conductor. So the grain that is in contact with the plastic will approach or reach the ambient temperature in the day. And in the night, it will go down. So you have a cycling temperature in the upper layer, 5 centimeters, 8 centimeters. Deeper than that, you will not see this oscillation day and night because of this characteristic of the, of the grain. And uh, it will follow the, the main mass of grain. It will follow the average temperature of the month to give you a, a reference. For instance, for, for in our case here, the average temperature in January, which is our hottest month, is 22, 23 degrees C, the average. In, in the daytime, you can get 34, whatever. Uh, in the night, 20, 18. So you see in the top layer, this oscillation, 20 centimeters inside, it will be steady in 25 degrees C. And in, in, in the fall, it will go down to 18. And in winter, it will go down to 8, the main bulk of grain in the silo bag. It will follow the average ambient temperature. In the surface, you will see this oscillation. So what uh, impact it create on the first 5 milli uh, millimeter, millimeter? Centimeters. 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 centimeters of the, uh, it, it lost its color or what, what happened? No, 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 we don't, we haven't seen any, any kind of problem. We are measuring that now in malting barley. You know, barley is very critical, the, the uh, germination. So, uh, but so far we haven't seen uh, any kind of problem, but you don't see any visible damage, anything like that. Hmm. Uh, so it's, um, uh, but it's a characteristic of the bag. Uh, you have a differential temperature in the surface regarding to the center of the bag. You had mentioned that there's uh, different types of bags with uh, five layers or three layers. I'm assuming the one with five layers has better protection against things like the heat. Um, the, the protection against the heat is basic, basically the color of the bag. It's white because the, the white bag will reflect most of the uh, radiation, right? Um, uh, and, and all of them, they have UV protection, which is the other important features. And the other has some advantage in the manufacturing and cost of the bag. But basically, you will, you will not see that much difference. You m might have some difference. But the, the important thing is, since the material is the same, low density polyethylene, the thickness of the bag, 230 micrometers. If you go for a bag for forage, right, for, for making silage, those are thinner. The problem is when you fill one of those bags with dry grain, dry grain has more flowability, it will try to push the edge of the, the, the side of the bag outside and will overstretch the bag. And the 180 micrometers uh, liner will get too thin and too fragile. So it is, it is very important to use for dry grain 230 micrometer thickness of um, the bag.
So, uh, what about uh, frequency? Would you uh, share with us uh, two to three uh, methods of uh, getting samples and testing? One is uh, the uh, torpedo the probe. Yeah. Uh, one is the probe, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and one is the digital uh, side. So, uh, what are what uh, is your recommended frequency of uh, in in case of torpedoes? Okay. Of, uh, okay. Everything depends on what you want to know. Let's say that you are you, you want to preserve the um, um, you you want to know the quality of the wheat for baking purposes, right? For for making bread, flour, whatever, right? So you have to take, collect a physical sample and make the analysis, right? In that case, we recommend, based on the part of the year, of course, the most critical season will be summer, when the temperature is high, all the deterioration processes are running faster, right? So in summer, do a sampling more often, and in winter, more, less often, right? Or the lower, lower frequency. Um, you could ask in the tomorrow in the uh, in the um, flour mill that we are going to visit. How often they collect samples? Our recommendation is in summer. A couple of times, right? No more than that. A couple of times during a six months. Uh, yeah, season. but what we do recommend is a mix of um, monitoring approaches. This one. This one. You can do it every two. Weeks, whatever, no problem in the bag. It's just uh, it's, it's just uh, a little needle that you insert in the bag, and that's it. And it ha there is a patch that you will insert that, and you will know if there is a problem in conservation or not. You don't know the quality, of course, but you know if there is a problem. There is there are insects, there is water came in, and there are more development, whatever. So that's very easy, and you can do it. Every once every two weeks yeah. in, in, in summer and once a month in winter, right? And the same patch, if you, if you put the needle in one point yeah. on week one, week two, the same uh, area is used. Right, for it's, a, it's a patch that has, uh, it's a specific patch. You, you, you don't like uh, for um, some medicines that you, you insert the needle, take a sample, and remove it, and it closes automatically. It's more or less the same approach. So you you put the patch there and you make the perforations always in the patch. Okay. Mm? So that's that's it. Uh, so in that case, there is no uh, problem in the frequency. Yeah. Uh, you can do it as often as you want. Our recommendation is maybe two weeks in summertime and four weeks in wintertime. We are talking always about dry grain. Right, it's, it's already in a good storage condition. Mm -hmm. um, if you are going to store wet grain, that's, that is an other story. But I understand that you, because farmers here, they store grain, they store great, uh, wet grain in silo bags. Um, mostly corn, they will store it for two, three months. Uh, um, sometimes, sometimes more. They always push a little bit farther, right? Uh, so, but that's then you need to follow maybe other strategies because it's more risky, right? Okay. Um, but that will be the, the recommendation. The best we, is the third one, I guess. Although it's expensive, but it's a permanent. This one. This one. Yeah. Do you could, think that this is the best? The problem with this is 
here you will have one measurement every six months, six meters, six meters. In this one, to put a probe, a permanent probe, every six meters is going to be quite expensive. You have need, you need 10 probes per bag. Which means how much money? 10 cents. Hmm? It means 10 cents. 10 sensors. Yeah, yeah 10 sensors, right, right. Per right. bag. Per bag, yeah. per bag. So how much it costs, 10 sensors? ¿Sabes cuánto cuesta? No, we, we, we can, we can okay. ask, but okay. we don't know. Uh, Tiene diferentes características. Uno, este, medir. Sí, sí, sí. Sí, 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 eso ya lo, ya lo explicamos. They, they, he's talking that they, are different, they have different characteristics. In this one, you put it there and leave it, and it will collect the data for you. And the other, in this one, you have to go physically to the bag. You have to have somebody, someone. Hmm? Uh, that's, that's pros and cons, advantage and disadvantages. The, the main advantage of this one is practical, practicability and cost. In this one, it's easier maybe in the operation, but it's costly per ton. Hmm? And if you put one sensor per bag, then uh, you might know what's going on around the sensor, but uh, and the bag has 60 meter long. So that's why you have to put more than one sensor. Yeah? And that's, that this, then you have to evaluate what will be convenient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Carlos, acá. Por ahí, más importante es que ellos puedan incorporar la tecnología en general y saber que existe esto y que viene evolucionando. De hecho, mm -hmm. Sí, sí, sí. En realidad, probablemente todas esas cuestiones o las dudas que tenga de uno u otro se resuelvan con el avance de la tecnología. Porque cuando trajeron el primer medidor de dióxido de carbono, valía fortuna y hoy... Hoy se fabrica acá y es mucho más económico. Y, sí, 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 sí. Y probablemente esto evolucione a algo que cuando ellos terminen de incorporar la tecnología les resulte mucho más fácil. What he's saying is that this technology, the evolution of this technology is very fast and probably in in in, in next year or a few years these uh, probes will be cheap enough in order to, to be very competitive in cost yeah. with, with this other, but, but the important is the concept. You, you get the concept and then there will be a practical, for sure, a technological evolution, but the concept is there are alternative solutions for monitoring, not only collecting a physical sample of the grain as we traditionally do. Sí, acá también es lo mismo. ¿eh? Right. No questions. Alguien quiere hacer algún agregar algún comentario para ellos de los ¿Se me escapó algo que quieran transmitirle a ustedes? ¿No? Ok. Storage space. Mm -hmm. uh, similarly, Pakistan farmers and Pakistan farmers do not have uh, storage space, so they are forced to sell their produce next day of harvesting or a couple of right. days after harvesting, uh, which means that majority of the profit goes to the pocket of the middleman. Mm -hmm. So our project is to bring some cost attractive. Uh, solutions of storage for farmers uh, so that s even small farmers or you know few small farmers can uh, use the, these 
uh, silo has jointly mm -hmm. and store their products there. Mm -hmm. And based on that, uh, it can be uh, warranted as well. Like you have a warrant system here. Uh, based on that, uh, you know, banks can finance. Right. That. So we are trying to implement that kind of system. Mm -hmm. So in order to do that, uh, in Pakistan, we have to demonstrate this system. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to for these companies uh, to plan with us a demonstration in Pakistan? Can they uh, do some uh, model, uh, you know, uh, model warehouses, small warehouses, so that farmers can see, can test it, and then there will be a huge market in Pakistan for. Um. We we can uh, we can talk about that. We can discuss that. Um, um, probably, uh, I, w I will ask now. But probably tomorrow, okay. after after the all the visits, okay. we will have uh, a meeting okay. in which we can discuss this okay. and probably other situations. Uh, Carlos, ¿vos escuchaste lo que dijo? ¿Querés hacer un comentario ahora? No, no, si está, estamos discutiendo si estamos dispuestos a ir a hacer la demostración allá. Sí. Porque tengo que discutir, es por eso que se lo estamos planteando. Bien. Eh, si estamos dispuestos a ir a jugar allá, a demostrar en el terreno todo lo que les mostró técnicamente y lo vamos a ver mañana. Escuchar internet. Es posible, sí, es posible. Pero solo necesitamos discutir con Ok. Pero sí, es una posibilidad. Porque en Pakistán. We have around 10 million farmers. Yeah. It's a huge population of farmers. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and they are not very, uh, you know, receptive of yeah. new technology. Yeah. Yeah, so they are very strict to market it. Yeah. yeah, so we have to market it. And the best way to... Como vean, este lote, es todo un lote que ha ocupado this uh, field, as you can see, is belongs to the, the, the firm, the, the storage facility, uh, and they rented this land specifically to make this uh, silo bag field plot. Al, al momento de hacer el silo bolsa, muy importante la preparación del terreno, muy muy importante ya que eh, donde se asiente el silo bolsa debe ser un lugar que no tenga puntos de ruptura y también debe ser un suelo firme para que la máquina, tanto eh, bolsadora y extractora, puedan trabajar bien y hacer un, pueden afirmarse en un suelo. Aquí la, la bolsa trae una indicación de dónde tiene que estar eh, fijado el, en el centro de la cama. Así nos aseguramos que la regla de estiramiento quede a un lado de la otra.
and generate carbon dioxide. Activity is low, so the carbon dioxide concentration here is low, right? So um, if you have a problem, you will increase the concentration and you will detect. So with this equipment, you, there you have a, a RFID. And those are the, the, the tags that I told you yesterday. So you put one every six meters. Six meters. So in a, in a 60 meter bag, ten, ten. you have 10 of these, yeah. right? And then you will enter the needle, enter the needle there. there. hacer un pequeño corte vertical o insertar el calador directamente. You can either make a small cut or just insert the probe. Yeah. El calador se debe insertar desde el lateral superior hacia el centro inferior, hacia el centro, buscando so, el centro de la bolsa. The, the idea is to collect the sample, uh, the profile of the sample from the, the, the side towards the the center and bottom. ¿Por qué? Porque cuando se el, el grano se almacena, se empiezan a estratificar los finos. Hay como diferentes estratos. Entonces, si metemos el calor de forma horizontal, estamos subestimando, sobreestimando diferentes porciones de grano. The, the, the reason for that mainly because when you load the grain, there are stratification of fine materials and stuff. So, if you insert the, the probe like this, you might underestimate the former estimate the fine concentration, fine material, the foreign matter. De esta forma sacamos una muestra representativa. So in this way we collect the more representative. La altura de donde se saca la muestra depende un poco de la altura de la persona. ¿eh? En realidad, si una persona es más baja, se debe insertar más abajo y buscando con un ángulo menor hacia el centro. So the, the, the se inserta cerrado. So you close it before... Se abre para... So you can put it in the in a, in a blanket or yeah. something, yeah. and or just.
especiales que son base de caucho. So this is a ceiling tape patches. It's the, the same material as we saw for for crossing the ceiling the back. The only difference here is not the double face, it's only one. And this is already directamente se pone. Thank you. 